I am pretty excited to power this thing up, but before we do that, let's check out all the details of this printer. So we'll start here on the top. We got the spool holder, and you guys saw how easy it clips in and out. Very simple. And you can move it on the channel back and forth, depending on you know where you want to set it up. I recommend putting it on center. Filament detector. It does move around, so the filament will come from here down into the detector, then from the detector into the extruder. So we also get this really cool looking light. Here it says do not press, and you can actually pull this off. Not pulling so nicely, I think I'm just gonna leave it. It is pretty fragile as it is just a piece of plastic. And there's a power switch here on the side that turns it on and off. So we do have these nice smooth channels all around, even on the X axis. Flipping the printer around, you guys can see we have supports for the elite screw, but also gears for the belt, which tethers the two leads together. And there are bearings inside there. So this part is all plastic. And then we got the metal gears with the leads. All these brackets are metal. Here on the other side, we can see how the wire clips are X-axis motor. Then the housing that has the gear. And underneath is where we plug in the end stop switch. Going down, we have the motor with the couplers on both sides. This is our junction box, which plugs in the Z motor, the power for the light up there, and the filament detector wire. And these wires travel up the channel and come out here. The on and off switch, I like how large it is. Very nice. Power input socket, it is fused. And then going to the middle here, we have the voltage selection. And this is also a sticker that we need to peel. And I have a feeling it's not gonna peel. Yeah, that's really hard to peel. <laughs> All right, there we go. And you guys probably can't see, but we are set on 230, and it's kind of deep in there and dark, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to 115. So make sure you check that and set it to the correct voltage or you could have problems with the printer. So yeah, in the back it's pretty clean, nothing too much going on. We got a wire coming out here to the bed and this is our Y-axis motor end stop switch. You can see it up here and our belt that runs inside. So here we have our aluminum heated bed, large knobs to adjust the level, high quality springs. And if you guys look underneath, we are insulated also. So that should give us a great heat up time. And on this side, you guys can see we are super strained relieved with this pretty large connection here to the bed. So that's very nice to see. Flipping back around to the front, let's go ahead and take a closer look at our hot end. So this is a really nice looking piece. So this is where our filament will feed in. You can see we got some kind of like brass bushing in there. This is our release arm for the extruder so everything is metal here there's a gear here that kind of pokes out and that looks like it's ran by this motor which runs the extruder and that'll probably be a good indicator to see if you know the extruder is moving on the motor itself we got ender branding there very nice to this side we can see where we installed the bolts that hold it all together we got the parts cooling fan here with a metal shroud around it on this side we have the CR touch connected here and our cooling fan behind this shroud here and then we can see some wires peeking out there. So looking here on the bottom, kind of see what our fan looks like there. And there's a duct that comes out and blows underneath. You can see the heat block that has a silicone sock and the tip of our nozzle. And if we go this way, you guys can see we have our X-axis end stop switch here. And this is all completely covered so you can't see anything inside of it. And on the other side here, we have the belt tensioner for the X and also a cover that covers everything up. So going down from the hot end, we have the build plate and this is a PEI finish on a very thin steel plate. So I really like these. They're really nice and easy to use. Things stick really good and this PEI material is really tough and long lasting. And you guys can see we have two tabs there on each side to pull it off. And it's literally just a steel thin sheet. And underneath that we have a magnetic mat that this magnetizes to. And it's not too hard to line up and it sticks really good. So on the bed we have this handle that's connected to it that you can pull and push on, I guess, to uh, move the bed back and forth instead of grabbing it like this or pushing it when it's hot. So that's a pretty nice detail. And below that, we got the Y channel that the bed rolls on with our belt and adjustment here for the tightness. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and check your bolts everywhere around the printer and see if they're tight, including here on top as over time, even sometimes at the manufacturer, they don't tighten them completely. And so they might need to be snugged up a bit. So going to the very front on the left side, we have our full size SD card slot and a USB type C port, which is used to connect to the computer. We've got this nice look here on the sides and this is one all large injected molded plastic. Our screen is actually more than 45 degrees leaning. So it's pretty flat down. So you can see it really good from the top and probably one of the coolest parts a really large storage box here on the front that could fit a lot of tools in there and whatnot else 
So yeah, I really like that. So going on the left side, we got a pretty clean channel here. And on the right side, we don't have too much here. And so the screen is a very nice, large size. We do have a sticker here that reminds us that we need to check our voltage on the power supply, which we've done already. So make sure you do that. Let's go ahead and peel this protector. And this is how they all should be like. Very easy to peel. So the screen looks really nice. We do have some bezels here around, but overall it's a great size and should be quite easy to operate. And we do have four large rubber feet on each corner that help with noise and vibration. So yeah guys, overall pretty cool looking printer. Really impressed with the design. Absolutely love the hot end direct drive extruder assembly here, which looks like they put a lot of effort in. So I'm definitely looking forward to running that. And overall just a really nice solid printer. So for the next part, let's go ahead and plug it in, power it on, and level the bed. All right, so I got it plugged in. Let's go ahead and the power switch, which is on this side here, very conveniently placed. And it does turn on. And you guys probably not gonna see the display at all, but it is powering up and it's booted up. And right away I can see that the display is a very high resolution. So we're gonna look at it closer here in a second. Let's go ahead and see if this light bar on top works. So I'm gonna hit the power button here on the side. And look at that, wow. It is quite bright and the light is actually more of like a soft white. So more on the warm instead of the cool. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the screen. And you guys can see the resolution is really clean. So even when I'm looking at it close, I pretty much can't even tell the pixels. Yeah, really liking that. So on the top we have our nozzle and bed temperatures, the speed and the Z axis offset, which is kind of interesting that this is the home and what it looks like. So the home looks like is also the printing page. So here we have the print button and this is going to read the SD card, which we don't have plugged in yet. Then we have the ready button. So here we can move our axes and also home the printer. So let's go ahead and click on home and it is moving home right now. And here you can choose the increments that it moves individually on each axis. And up here guys, we actually have sub menus. So this is axis move and then in and out, which is the extruder. And then you will have manual, which also has our preheats for PLA and ABS here, or you can manually enter it by typing it in. So let's go ahead and preheat it also. You guys can see change the 200 on the nozzle and 60 on the bed. And you also have fan control and cooling. In the settings, we have device, advanced, and about here. So under the device, we have PLA, ABS settings, where you can set the temperatures for that. We got the level button and a language. You guys can see all the different languages that are available. So here we have advanced settings and about. Let's click on about. So this is everything about the printer. We can see it's the S1 Pro firmware. There's actually our main board model number. And the print size is 220 squared on the bottom and 270 tall. And if we click on advanced settings, we have movement, restore all, and PIDs. So yeah, it's pretty basic here, guys, and nicely laid out. Very clean UI. So we're going to go to settings here and do our leveling. So under settings, we're going to hit the level button, and that's going to set us up for for leveling the bed and there's two stages to this first we manually level it and then we're gonna let the auto leveling probe do the job and so to do the manual leveling we'll have to click on AUX the level on this side so it's doing a probe right now in the center and I lower you guys down so we can see a little better, but yeah, it's setting up for it. All right, so after clicking on AUX, and you guys won't see this at all, but there's five points that it gives us on the bed and also a Z-axis offset. And so we're just simply gonna push on the points. So we'll start here with this corner and you'll need some kind of paper. I'm just using a sticky note. And we'll start leveling the bed as you normally do manually. All right, move to the next one. And so the reason you want to do it manually is because if you let the out of bed leveling do everything and your bed is not level already, it's going to have to compensate so much. There's a good chance it won't work right if you don't manually flatten the bed first. And this is what we're doing here. So you want to go around at least two or three times and get it close. And also don't forget that you do need to be preheated so everything's expanded. So since this bed is not that large, it's actually quite easy to get it close quickly. And I'm pretty much there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go around one more time to make sure, because I do wanna be as close as possible. That way our out of bed leveling won't have to compensate so much. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we can go to the middle, so it doesn't really matter what the middle is. Yeah, on mine here is actually a little bit tighter. When it measures everything, it'll compensate for that. And you guys probably can't see this at all, but the auto leveling button is right here. So let's click it, push start, and there it goes. So it actually is taking three probes in one spot. 
and looks like it's gonna do a four by four most likely yep and so that'll be 16 points on the bed that it will measure I just realized guys that the, uh, the camera was a bit over focused to the front hopefully you can see it better now all right and looks like it is done with the out of leveling all right so for the next part we need to set our offset we'll click on AUX level again and down here we're gonna have our Z axis offset setting right below the numbers but first we want to click on number one to set us up and we'll click it down since I'm too high all right getting close and there we go so once it gets a little tight just go up one from there well depending on how thick your paper is and that's it so mine ended up being minus 1.20 millimeters for the offset and simple as that guys we are done with out of bed leveling so let's go ahead and home it all right so now that everything's good to go let's go ahead and load the filament and i'm going to use this silky copper looking filament here and we're going to put it on our spool holder wow this thing's so nice because it has that bearing and so it spins really easy so from there we're going to go through the detector and it does have a little blue light there and then we're going to go down into the extruder on the extruder we have this lever that we push just like that and then we can feed the filament in and we can go ahead and push it through until it comes out the other end and you guys can see there as i push it down we can purge it and that's the best way to do it on a direct drive extruder like this as it is pretty quick to just push it through yourself now you can go to the ready and click on in and out we'll click on in let's just say 15 millimeters enter and it'll push it through 15 millimeters so yeah either way but it is short and so it's quite easy just to do it yourself so yeah guys we're pretty much ready to print we've preheated leveled the bed set the z-axis offset put our filament in so let's go ahead and grab our sd card that was included and it is an 8 gig and it should plug in right here and it looks like it goes in upside down yes so we'll click on print and you guys probably can't see this very well but we do have a few files to print here so we have a rabbit cat handle and also some kind of ender bit file so let's go with the one on top which is the rabbit so we'll click on it and i guess we need to push the play button here yep sure enough and it starts and there it goes so i'm going to click on z axis offset here to compensate just in case we need to go up or down as it starts printing And we can see our CR Touch doing his job. And there it goes. And uh, yeah, right off the bat, the offset looks perfect. And you guys probably won't see practically anything because of this fan shroud here. Yeah, it's we'll probably got to go through the site to view it here. But yeah, it looks like perfect as far as I can tell. Can zoom you guys in here a bit kind of see the tip of the nozzle there but yeah looks like our offset was just bright and we go straight to printing and this is one of those things that I love about Creality printers is that as long as you set everything up pretty good it usually works out great and just starts printing so as far as the sound it's actually pretty quiet it's not completely dead silent like you can hear the steppers working they're just very muted but I'm going to bring my microphone in so you guys can hear it But I do have to say the fan noise is actually much quieter than most printers. So overall I would say this printer is moderately quiet. So going back to the screen you guys can see that it's pretty dim and it does out of dim itself. So if you click on it it goes to being bright and I guess that's a good feature for preserving the screen life but I wish there was a way to keep it on so you could see it all the time. So this is what we see when we're printing. We got a stop pause down here. The progress 11% done and there's like a progress circle and the amount of time passed since we started which is 8 minutes now. The file name above that and then on top here we have the nozzle temperature and the target the bed temperature target the printing speed and the z-axis offset so if we click on any of this we'll have another menu that pops up where we can adjust the nozzle bed print speed the fan and the z-axis offset where you could do here so if you need to go a little up or a little down when you first start printing you can do that here so yeah very basic controls 
and very cleanly laid out separated between each other all right so yeah looks like we're printing away pretty quickly actually and it won't probably take too long to print this print as it is booging along so we'll print this and maybe another file and see what they look like All right, so we got the rabbit and the cat printed out. The printer did well. Seems to print great with no issues. So let's go ahead and take a closer look of what we got here. So we'll start with the little rabbit. So you guys can see the layers went down really nicely. So this filament is a silky, but it's kind of really cheap. So you might see a little bit of discoloring and stuff like that. But overall, great layer adhesion. You can kind of see some lines. There is a little bit of layering down here, but very small. And overall, really nice print. You can really tell the accuracy of this printer and how well it puts the layers down. There is a little bit of stringing between the ears, so not sure what the retraction set at. And we also have a little bit of overhang or something going on here. Yeah, other than that, everything looks great and pretty good print overall, I would say. So we also printed out the cat and he's still stuck to the build platform. Let's see how easy it pops off. And look at that, pretty easy. And this seems to work really good, this PEI sheet. Now on the cat, we did have a little bit of an issue. One of our supports broke loose and I think we were a little bit far from the bill plate. So as it was printing, I did offset the Z a little bit lower, but that was pretty much at the end of the start there. So go ahead and get these supports off and look at this little cat. So yeah, again, overall, very nice layer adhesion. The layers seem to go down very evenly. We do have a little bit of unevenness here and there and plus we didn't slice these prints so I have no idea of you know the parameters on them but overall not too bad and a really good start here for the S1 Pro.